Welcome to the Madison Miller Podcast. Today is Wednesday, March 22nd, 2023. Today I'm going to recap yesterday's NBA, NHL from yesterday. Look ahead to today. Um, women's tourney for Monday and an NIT, CIT from yesterday. Look ahead to tonight. Uh, WBC, golf, spring training, survivor, mass singer, news and notes, and best bet. We'll start with the NBA. Um, we'll recap the games from yesterday and look ahead to a 10 game window for tonight. Um so um Magic over to Wiz 122 112 Hawks over to Pistons 129 107 Cavs over to Nets 115 109 Pelicans over to Spurs 11984 Celtics over to Kings 132 109 and the Thunder over to Clippers 100 to 1 to 100 all right, tonight's slate, 7 o'clock, you have the Nuggets and the Wizards. I project Denver by 5, total 227 and 19-20ths. And we have here um, 7 and 228. Um, I'm going to take the Wiz getting the 5. Um, 7.30, Knicks Heat. I have projected heat one half total two twenty three and a quarter and it's two and two twenty four and a half. Wow, actually a slight under in a heat Knicks game is the pick. Pacers Raptors. I project Toronto set or four and three quarters total two twenty nine and eleven twentieths. And it's nine and two thirty four and a half. Um whoo. Um, under. Although the Pacers getting nine is a good underdog pick. Um, ESPN tonight, Warriors, Mavs. My projection style is three and three quarters, total 231 to 11 twentieths. And we have the Warriors by two, total 234 and a half. Why is Golden State favored on the road? They have like seven road wins all season. Give me Dallas plus the two, plus 110 to win the game outright. 8 o'clock, Sixers, Bulls. My line, Sixers by 4, total 225 and 9 tenths. And it is 3.5 and, and 2.22. I'll take the over. Rockets, Grizz. My line's Grizz, 14, total 228 and a quarter. And it's 12.5 and, and 2.31 and a half. Um, I'll take the under. Spurs, Bucks. My line's Bucks, 19, total 231 and 11 20ths. And it's 17.5 and 2.37 and a half. Under. Um, Hawks Timberwolves. I have Minnesota by three, total 233 and 11 twentieths. And it's four and 241 and a half. Oh my god, under. That's way too high of a total. Nine o'clock, Blazers Jazz. My line's Jazz by six, total 232 and a half. And it's four and a half and 234. So. At gunpoint, I would say slightly in jazz because it's the same uh, gap between uh, my projection and the actual line. And last but not least, 10 o'clock ESPN, Suns, Lakers from crypto. My line's Lakers 3 and 3 quarters, total 229 and a 10th. And then it's Suns by 1, total 229. Give me the Lakers plus the 1 and minus 102 to win the game outright. All right, now I'll move on to hockey. Um... Big window from yesterday. We'll go over it, and then we'll look ahead to a smaller window for tonight. Canes over to Rangers, 3-2. Bruins over to Suns, 2-1. Preds over to Sabres, 7-3. Habs over to Bolts, 3-2. Wild over to Devils, 2-1 OT. Flyers over to Panthers, 6-3. Jackets over to Caps, 7-6 OT. Isles over to Leafs, 7-2. Red Wings over to Blues, 3-2 shootout. Jets over to Coyotes, 2-1. Kraken over to Surge, 5-4 OT. Flames over to Ducks, 5-1. Golden Knights over to Canucks, 4-3. Only two games tonight, 8 o'clock on TNT of the Pens at the Avalanche. Boy, the Pittsburgh Penguins are in trouble now. And did the oh, the Islanders killed Toronto and then and then the but the Panthers lost. So that's good news for Pittsburgh, who um is one back of the Panthers. So um if, if Pittsburgh wins tonight, they get they're back in that last plot playoff spot in the East. Um, 
Colorado's minus 164. Pittsburgh plus 134 over under 6.5. Overs minus 106. Unders minus 114. Pittsburgh plus 1.5 is minus 76. Abs minus 1.5 is plus 146. So I'm going with the over. And then the nightcap on TNT tonight. 10.30. Coyotes, Oilers. Terrible game. Oilers minus 40. Coyotes plus 365 over under 6.5. Overs minus 140. Unders plus 114. Arizona plus one half is plus one fifty. Oilers minus one half is minus one eighty two. I'm going Coyotes puck line plus one half is plus one fifty to keep this thing close. All right, now we'll do the women's tournament. We'll go over um, the round of thirty two games from Monday night. The Sweet Sixteen will get underway on Friday. Um, so, um, Seattle. Three second round three seed Ohio State over sixty North Carolina seventy one sixty nine Seattle regional three second round four seed Tennessee over twelve seed Toledo ninety four forty seven Greenville two second round four seed Villanova over twelve seed Florida Gulf Coast seventy six fifty seven Seattle four second round five seed Louisville over four seed Texas seventy three fifty one Greenville two second round ninth seed Miami over one seed Indiana seventy sixty eight so Miami. Knocks out a one seed. So two one seeds out. Seattle, three second round, two seed UConn over 17 Baylor, 77-58. Seattle, four second round, six seed Colorado over three seed Duke, 61-53 in overtime. And Greenville, one second round, four seed UCLA over five seed Oklahoma, 82-73. So we'll actually do lines and all that for the Sweet 16 which begins on Friday. All right, now we'll do NIT from yesterday, and we have two more quarterfinal NIT games for you tonight. Um, North Texas over Oklahoma State, 65-59 in overtime. Wisconsin over Oregon, 61-58. And then tonight, 7 o'clock on ESPN2, UAB and Vanderbilt. Um, I project UAB as a two-and-a-half-point road favorite at Vandy, total 147 and 13 twentieths. And we have here one-and-a-half and 152-and-a-half, but the money lines are even. Um, so for this one, I'm going to go with the under. And at 9 o'clock on ESPN2, Cincinnati and Utah Valley. I have Cincinnati 6.5 total 145 and 3 quarters, and it's Utah Valley 1.5 total 140, 6.5. I'm going to take Cincinnati plus 1.5 at minus 122, but they're minus, only minus 108 on the money line. So that's essentially a pick em right there. All right, the CIT from last night. Um, We had the two semifinal games, and then we have The final for tonight. Um, Eastern Kentucky over Southern Utah, 108 106 in double overtime. And Charlotte over Radford, 63 56. So, 5 o'clock ESPN 2 tonight from Daytona Beach. Charlotte, Eastern Kentucky. Games coming on ESPN 2. I project Charlotte 4 and a quarter total, 138 and a half. And we have Charlotte five and a half total one thirty three and a half. I'll take the over. Um, that's easy. I just think that um, Charlotte. Um, when I think it's be a higher scoring game than expected, so over one thirty three and a half will be the pick. Right there for that one. All right, spring training. Um, we'll go over results. From yesterday and look ahead to today's window. Um, Yanks over the Tigers 6-3. Orioles over the Red Sox 6-2. Astros over the Marlins 2-1. Pirates over the Phils 4-3. Nats and Cardinals 4-4 tie. Dodgers over the Guardians 4-2. Giants over the Dodgers 12-1. Angels over the D-backs 7-1. White Sox over the Brewers 6-5. Angels lose to the A's 6-5. Twins over the Rays 5-2. Cubs over the Royals 6-2-7. And And the Padres over the Rockies 14-2. All right, today's spring window, 1 o'clock, Yanks, Nats, 
Phil's Rays, Braves, Tigers, Orioles, Jays, Astros, Mets, Cards, Marlins. 4 o'clock, White Sox, Rangers, Cubs, A's, Royals, White Sox, Rangers, Giants, A's, Rockies. 6 o'clock, Twins, White, uh, Red Sox. 9 o'clock, Padres, Reds. And 940 of the Dodgers. And the Mariners. All right, the World Baseball Classic came to a conclusion last night. It was a super fun game as Japan knocks off the United States by a score of 3-2 to win the 2023 World Baseball Classic Championship. Um, so this was a fun game. And um, the MVP was obviously Shoya Otani. Um, he single-handedly willed them to this, I feel like. Um, his bat was outstanding. Um, he pitched a really fun ninth inning to close out the, the World Baseball Classic. And the game ended with Trout versus Otani, which is appropriate. Um, and Trout struck out. Um but U.S. got on the board first with a home run by Trey Turner to make it one nothing. And in the bottom of the second, um, Japan got on the board with the home run. By Munataka Murakami. And then also in the bottom of the second, um, RBI ground out by Lars Nukbar. They make it 2 on Japan. And then in the bottom of the fourth, there's a home run by Kazuma Okamoto. To make it 3-1 Japan. And then the top of the eighth, Kyle Schwarber homer to make it 3-2. Make it a little bit more interesting. But ultimately, the U.S. bats went cold. They relied on the home run too much. Japan with some small ball and some power. And their pitching was outstanding. Dar- you Darvish and Choi Otani came in last. And Darvish gave up the homer to, Sh- to Schwarber. But um, I think Japan played this game out really well. So, uh, um. Good job to the Japan manager. I think he managed a great game. I thought DeRosa did a good job too. But I think his team relied on the home run ball too much. And that is just your prototypical Major League Baseball team this day. And there are so many good players on. It was like the all-star team. But um, Japan wins it. Otani, MVP, duh. Who else would the MVP go to if Japan didn't win? All right, now I'll move on to soccer. Um, we have some results to get to. Um, there might be soccer going on today, too. Um, so, um, UEFA women's... Um, Bayern over Arsenal 1 0 first leg, and then Barcelona over Roma 1 0 first leg. Two today, 145 Lion and Chelsea. Um, interesting match. Um, trying to find, um, You, the women's. There we go. Um, Lion is even money. Chelsea's plus two forty. Draws plus two thirty. I'm gonna go with the draw plus two thirty. I think that's intriguing. And then four o'clock at PSG and Wolfsburg. Women. Um, PSG's plus two ten. Wolfsburg's plus one five. Draws plus two fifty. PSG's been hot. I'm gonna take them at plus two ten to knock off Wolfsburg here. A lot of international friendlies coming up. Um, so, yesterday, um, New Caledonia over 
Tahiti 2-0, and Maldives over Pakistan 1-0. And then this morning, Neil, uh, Nepal over Laos 2-0, and India over Myanmar 1-0. 3.45 today, rep by Ireland and Latvia. Um... Ireland's minus seven hundred, Latvia's fifteen hundred, the draw is five to one. Ireland's just so much better. Um I'm gonna go under two and a half goals in minus one way. I could see this being two no. And eleven o'clock tonight, El Salvador and Honduras. Um Honduras is plus one forty five, El Salvador is plus one ninety, draws plus one ninety five. I kinda like the draw at plus one ninety five here. And in a lot of games overnight, there's um, and it ends tomorrow morning, two thirty tomorrow morning. New Zealand and China. New Zealand's minus one seventy. China's plus four seventy. Draws plus two fifty. I'm gonna go with the draw at plus two fifty. I think that's interesting. Um, Tahiti in New Caledonia. Um, I don't see that one. On the board. We weirdly enough, but I'll take um I'll take the draw. Three thirty of Solomon Island and Vandanatu. Um so for that one I'll probably say Solomon Islands. And then 8 o'clock tomorrow morning is Hong Kong and Singapore. Um, Hong Kong's minus 135. Singapore's plus 350. Draws plus 240. Um, for this one, I'm going to go over 2.5 goals at plus 102. And then the... Um, Africa Cup of Nations qualifying. Um, we have two games today. 11 o'clock, you have Benin and Rwanda. Um, I'm trying to pull up these. Um... These odds, um, which I cannot find, um, so, um, hmm, let's see if they're in here, um, I don't see them in here. And then you have 2 o'clock, you have Sierra Leone and Sao Tome and P. I'm going to say that Rwanda wins and Sao Tome and P wins. And then 9 o'clock tomorrow morning, you have Madagascar and Central African Republic. I'm going to say Madagascar wins that one. And then... I want to get into um, the um, uh, um, oof, what's that lead called? Um, That we touched on yesterday. Um. Oh, the. The Open Cup. Um. Trying to find that here. Um. The Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup. Um, 
Yeah, but I can't find it on here. Um, but, um, we will, uh, I'll touch on the games. Um, 7 o'clock, you have Appalachian FC and NC Fusion. Um, I'm going to go with the draw, plus 240. And each side's plus 150. By the way, Manhattan and Motown FC. Manhattan's plus 140. Motown FC, plus 155. Draw, plus 250. I'm going to go with Manhattan. 8 o'clock, Tulsa Athletics and Barzos Valley. Tulsa's plus 130. Barzos, plus 140. Draw, plus 310. I'm going to go with Tulsa with that one. Alrighty. Um now move on to golf. Um we have um a new tournament that's getting underway. It is the uh Corrales Punta Cana Resort and Club Championship. Um I'm gonna go through tea times. Uh six forty five Kevin Tway, Matt Trainer, Miliano Grio, Charlie Hoffman, Kula Vegas, six fifty seven, Doug Gim, DJ Tran, um, Taylor Ganey. I'm gonna go through notable tea times, seven oh nine, um Tyson Alexander, Max McGreevy, Bryce Garnett, Jason Duffner, Sam Pierce, Scott Piercy, 721, Richie Renski, Chad Ramey, Amber Van Royen, 733, Justin Lauer, Jonathan Bird, 745, Wyndham Clark, um, Bo Van Pelt, Adam Long, 757, um, Kramer Heacock, Harrison Endicott, Russell Knox, 809, um, you have Scott Harrington, Michael Gilgic, eight twenty one with Andrew Novak, um, Emiliano Goya, eight thirty three. Um, nobody of note. Um, eleven thirty five. Hank Lebiota, DA Point, Cam Piercy, Scott Brown, eleven forty seven. Matthias Schwab, Sean O'Hare, eleven fifty five. Henrik Norlander, Grayson Chalmers, Jason Hadley. 12-11, Matthew Wallace, Joel Dahman, Tyler Duncan. 12-23, Patrick Rogers, Taylor Pendrith, Kevin Stradler, Kelly Kraft. 12-35, uh, Mark Hubbard, Ben Crane, um, Ben Martin. 12-47, MJ Doffe. Um, 12-59, um, Kevin Westmoreland, um, Harry Higgs, 111, um, Scott Stevens, and then 123, um, Scott Stallings. All right, so a pick for this um, tournament. Um, I'm going to go... Um, with, um, this one I think is due to come through, and he's 22 to 1, and it'll lay a fifth of a unit on it, and that is Matt Wallace to win the 2023 Corrales Puta Championship. All right, WGC Dell match play is going on right now. Um, I want to quickly uh, go over... Um, The leaderboard for it. Um, so round one's going on right now. Um, group eleven. Um, Matt Fitzpatrick and um, JJ Spawn are one up. Sahith Thiglia and Minwoo Lee are one up. Group six. And by the way, Matt Fitzpatrick and JJ Spawn through three, and C. Thiglia and Minwoo Lee through two. Xander Shoffley and Cam Davis went up through one. Tom Hogue and Aaron Weiss went up through one. Group 14, 
Tyrell Hatton and Ben Griffin tied. Russell Henley and Lucas Herbert going at 11-15, group three. Um, 11-26, Rory McIlroy and Scott Goings. 11-37, Keegan Bradley and Dennis McCarthy. Group 10, 11-48, Tony Finau and Christian Ziedenhout at 11-48. 11-59, Kurt Katayama and Adrian Murnock. Group 7, 12-10, Will Zalatoris and Drew Putnam. 12-21, Harry English and Ryan Fox. Group 15, 12-32, Cam Young and Davis Thompson. 12-43, Substraka, Corey Connors. Group 2, 12-54, John Rahm and Ricky Fowler. 105, Brett Horschel and Keith Mitchell. Group 12, 116, Jordan Spieth and Mackenzie Hughes. 127, Shane Lowry and Taylor Montgomery. Group 5, Max Homa and Justin Sue. And 138 and 149, Hideki Matsuyama and Kevin Kisner. Group 13, 2 o'clock, Sam Burns, Adam Hadwin. 211, Seamus Power and Adam Scott. Group 4, 222, Patrick Cantley and Nick Taylor. 233, Brian Harmon and Kangoo Lee. Group 9, 244, Colin Morikawa, Victor Perez. 255, Jason Day and Adam Svevson. Group 8, 306, Victor Hovland and Matt Kuchar. At 306, and 317, Chris Kirk and Sai Wu Kim. Group 16, 328, Sun J.M. and Maverick McNeely. And 339, Tommy Fleetwood and J.D. Potson. And in Group 1, 350, Scotty Scheffler and Davis Riley. And 401, Tom Kim and Alex Noren. All right. I'm going to live bet somebody to win it. Right now, this individual is also 22 to 1. And I'm going to go lay a fifth of a unit on Jordan Spieth to win the 2023 WGC Dell match play. Now I'm going to do my shortstop rankings for the 2023 Major League Baseball season. I go from 30 to 1. Number 30, Vaughn Grissom, Braves. 29, Ezekiel Tovar, Rockies. 28, Kevin Newman, Reds. 27, Jorge Mateo, Orioles. 26, Luis Rengifo, Angels. 25, Nick Ahmed, Diamondbacks. 24, Lemmy's Diaz, Athletics. 23, Joy Wendell Marlins, 22. Miguel Rojas, Dodgers, 21. Brandon Crawford, Giants, 20. Oswald Peraza, Yankees, 19. C.J. Abrams, Nats, 18. J.P. Crawford, Mariners, 20, or 17. Tommy Edmond, Cardinals, 16. Ahmed Rosario, Guardians, 15. Kike Hernandez, Red Sox, 14. Willie Adamas, Brewers, 13. Javier Baez, Tigers, 12. Tim Anderson, White Sox, 11. O'Neill Cruz, Pirates, 10, Jeremy Pena, Astros, 9, Bobby Wood Jr., Royals, 8, Bo Bichette, Blue Jays, 7, Dansby Swanson, Cubs, 6, Xander Bogarts, Padres, 5, Corey Seager, Rangers, 4, Wander Franco, Rays, 3, Francisco Lindor, Mets, 2, Carlos Correa, Twins, and number 1, Trey Turner of the Philadelphia Phillies. Trey Turner is the best shortstop in baseball right now all around. I think he's going to have a monster year playing in the in Philly. Correa... Got the big contract from the Twins after failed agreements with the Giants and the Mets. So Correa back in Minnesota. Um, Francisco Lindor had a great year last year. Uh, Wander Franco's on the com. I think Corey Seager in that small ballpark will do well in year two of that big contract. Um, Bogarts, I don't like the contract. I don't really love the fit either, to be honest. So I think that's an odd one, but he might put up stats. Um, Dansby Swanson, the Cubs needed like a stabilized player at some point. And you know they're going to be all in on Otani in the winter to like reboot themselves, and Swanson's just the start of it. Bichette, I think, is poised for a big season after a little, some may say disappointing for him. Bobby Witt Jr., up-and-coming shortstop. And in Peña, obviously, ALCS and World Series MVP. So he belongs in the top 10 as the Astros really um, did themselves well in replacing uh, Carlos Correa. All right, and now the third base rankings. Um go from 30 to 1 just like every other rankings on um, 30 Nick Matone Tigers 29 David Villar Giants 28 Spencer Streeter Reds 27 Josh Rojas D-backs 26 Jace Peterson A's 25 
Jamir Candelario, Nationals, 24. Patrick Wisdom, Cubs, 23. Hunter Dozier, Royals, 22. Brian Anderson, Brewers, 21. Jose Miranda, Twins, 20. Eduardo Escobar, Mets, 19. Gene Segura, Marlins, 18. Isaac Paredes, Rays, 17. Josh Young, Rangers, 16. Gunnar Henderson, Orioles, 15. Cabrian Hayes, Pirates, 14. Alec Bohm, Phillies, 13. Eugenio Suarez, Mariners, 12. Jan Mancata, White Sox, 11. Anthony Rendon, Angels, 10, Max Monty, Dodgers, 9, Ryan McMahon, Rockies, 8, DJ LeMayu, Yankees, 7, Matt Chapman, Blue Jays, 6, Austin Riley, Braves, 5, Alec Bregman, Alex Bregman, Astros, 4, Rafael Devers, Red Sox, 3, Jose Ramirez, Guardians, 2, Manny Machado, Padres, 1, Nolan Arenado, Cardinals. Um, You could argue any of the top maybe six third baseman for number one. And you can put those guys in any order. They're all outstanding players. Um, but I went with Arenado and then Machado, a very close second. But, yeah, the top six are easily the top six the third base. But you could go any order with them. Matt Chapman looking to bounce back after a dismal year one with the Blue Jays. For the Yankees, I have DJ LeMayu in these – rankings instead of Josh Donaldson because I think DJ LeMay is going to play more third base than Josh Donaldson and Donaldson just isn't good anymore like so he's not even he didn't even make the list like if you noticed in the uh shortstop rankings I have Oswald Peraza in there instead of Isaiah Kiner Falefa Kiner Falefa is gonna be a bench player Donaldson might get cut so I went with my gut on who do I think will be the uh, shortstop and third baseman for most of the month of April, if not opening day, barring some injuries. But then some may say, oh, then why isn't Anthony Volpe your shortstop? Because they're going to do the uh, rule where they're going to stick him in AAA, like the Chris Bryant rules, I like to call it, where they get the extra year of control on the player. That's why Anthony Volpe is going to be starting in AAA. McMahon, I think, will beat the Rockies third baseman once Brendan Rodgers comes back. Max Muncy at third base is going to be interesting. Rondon, someone on the decline. Third base is deep. Even Suarez is pretty good at 13. We'll see how Jan Mankata performs this year. I have a couple of young guys in there that I really like as well. So third base goes like 17, 18 deep. Meanwhile, shortstop. I think is so weak compared to third base and even first base for that matter too. Shortstop, um, I thought the top three were easy. I think Franco's up and coming. And then I think the cut line, I think that arguably is the easy top 10. Because I don't think Tim Anderson is a top 10 shortstop. I don't, same with Javier Baez at this point. He's always injured, so... I think the top 10 shortstops on this list are the top 10 and should be. So there you have it for the third base and shortstop rankings. All right, now we'll do um, a look ahead to the Mass Singer tonight. Um, 8 o'clock on Fox, you know the drill. So this week's going to be country night, and we will see the fairy back. Um. We'll start with her from last week. Um, there was a police badge. There was a broom. Panther. It was a Black Panther. A basketball. There was money. Tinseltown. So there's a hint towards New York. Rubber Ducky. A rub, there's a Rubber Duck. Maybe it's a nod to Sesame Street. Because last week was Sesame Street. And then she performed You're No Good by Linda Ronstadt. Um, my guess for this right now is Angela Bassett. Um, she's somebody that was in Pink Panther, so that clue is probably where I'm stuck. And she's also from New York. And then the celebrity clue was um, Endless Love. It was the thing that uh, Cookie Monster brought out that was on a piece of paper. Um, Jenny said Tracy Ellis Ross. Ken stupidly said Angelina Jolie. And Robin said Regina Jones. Um, and then... Um, Squirrel performed um, Just the Two of Us by Grover Washington Jr. Um, there was a young boy on the set 
with the Sesame Street set on the show named Demir. And he brought out his older brother, who happened to be the one and only Damar Hamlin. That was probably my favorite moment on The Masked Singer this whole season. Um... And it was so neat to see him. And he got a nice ovation. Ken was literally in tears. And then the DeMar came out with the clue that it was a football with a picture of Ken on it. And the squirrel hen was not the first time they've worked together. And maybe more than once. Um, and then the jackalope. Um, there's a lot of social media clues. Maybe TikTok. Um, she wasn't social when she was young. Um, she performed Wherever, Whenever by Shakira. And then the celebrity clue was brought out by The Count. And then it was 30 under 30. And has been, has had, um, was in the same sentence as Michael B. Jordan, Donald Glover, and Emma Stone. Um, Scroll went home first. I thought it was Cameron Diaz. Robin said Heather Grant. Ken said Catherine Hegel. Nicole said Kate Hudson. Jennifer said Anne Hathaway. Jenny said Malin Ackerman. And Jenny was right. It was Malin Ackerman. And then a uh, fairy, fairy survived the Battle Royale. Jack Lope went home. I thought it was Ar- Addison Ray. Nicole thought it was Lele Pond. So did Robin. Jenny said Jenna Ortega. Ken said Selena Gomez. Jennifer said Camila Cabello. And it was Lele Pons. Um, so Nicole and Robin were light, right on one. And Jenny was right on the other. I think all four, um, all four of the, uh, um, the panelists have been right on somebody this year. Don't forget, Ken was right a few weeks ago with um, Howie Mandel. So um, Ken was right. I think Ken's been right at least once a season. Dating back on the history of the show, oh, and when I feel like once a season, Ken's been right. And I feel like Jenny's right maybe twice or three times a year. Robin's right about the same. Nicole gets at least four or five right. Nicole's easily the best panelist on the show. So at gunpoint, do I think Fairy moves on or somebody new emerges? I'm going to say Fairy goes home. That's my gut. My gut tells me Fairy goes home tonight. And then we'll see a new um, champion move on to episode six next week. All right, Survivor, um, it's going to be an interesting episode tonight. Um, So um, last week we saw Claire of the Soka tribe go home. Um, What caused her was that she sat out like every challenge. And so she deserved to go home, I think. Um, So... Tika has four, Ratu has five, and Soka has five. And my gut tells me that the Ratu tribe goes to council tonight, and the person I think gets voted out, I'm going to say it's Jamie, because I think um, her fake idol gets exposed, and um, she gets voted out. It's all the makings. And then uh, it's going to be uh, very sketchy with that group to figure out, like, who um, made the fake idol and how that came about. So um, that's my gut for tonight. And the person I think is going to win this, if I had the guest right now, I'm going to say it's Sarah, who I think has been... Um, Pretty interesting in the show, and I think if she makes the merge, then look out. And then the the person um, that I think is probably going to make the merge, but is going to be out sooner than you expect, kind of like Noel last season, I think that's going to be Jam Jam, but I think we're a few weeks away from Jam Jam being voted out, maybe even a month away or so. So um, I wouldn't worry about Jam Jam yet, but I do think that there's a possibility that he um, gets voted out sooner rather than later on the show. Um, So we'll recap the show from tonight on tomorrow's podcast. All right, now move on to news and notes. 
um, interesting stuff going on. Um, so I predicted something on the podcast unintentionally yesterday. Remember when I said on the podcast that, uh, I could totally see Iona hiring Tobin Anderson. Well, I had no inside information on that, and it actually happened. So Tobin Anderson agreed to a five-year deal with Iona. Um, good for him. I think he got a lot out of that fairly Dickinson team this year. Um, and now he goes to one of the best schools in the Metro Atlantic and replaces the legend. So... Um, We'll see how that works out. I think it's a good hire for Iona, and it looks like Fairleigh Dickinson is just going to go with one of their assistants. And then Providence made its hire. Um, they'll hire Kim English of George Mason to replace Ed Cooley. I don't know if I like this hire, and I'm surprised that... Um, Kim English uh, got this job, unless if he um, went to school there. Um, so his alma mater was Missouri. So I'm surprised that he's at Providence now. I'm not saying it's going to be a bad hire, but I'm surprised they took George Mason's coach of all coaches. I If they were going to go to the A-10 for their hire, I would have honestly went with Keith Ergo at Fordham. I feel like he earned himself a big job this year with the job he did at Fordham. I would have went with Keith Ergo over um, Kim English. I'm sorry. But I'm not saying, like I said, it's not a bad hire. But um, I personally would have went with uh, Keith Ergo of Fordham, if you asked me. Um, who uh, um, Providence would go with if they went with an A-10 coach. But we'll see how that works out. I'm in wait and see with that hire. I'm not saying it's a bad hire. But I would have just gone elsewhere, that's all. And then George Mason opens up. Where could they go is a question. Um, if I'm them, I would take a look at Mike Morrill of UNC Asheville, who did a outstanding job. This year, um, I would take a look at Speedy Claxton at Hofstra. Um, I don't know if um, Charleston's coach... Um, would go to, uh, um, Pat Kelsey. I don't know if Pat Kelsey would go over to George Mason, I think, um, but I think that would be a fabulous hire if they got Pat Kelsey, um, another name that I wouldn't rule out for George Mason is Pat Scary of Towson, um, there's a couple guys I could just ramble off a little bit for um George Mason's now opening um so yeah, interesting story so um, I don't love the Providence hire. I obviously think St John's today out of the park, although it seems like friend of the podcast Derek Felix disagrees. But maybe it's because of his past, why he uh, doesn't like it. But I think that St. John's had to do it. Um, obviously, Providence 
um, loses Cooley to Georgetown. Georgetown, I think, um, did a good job with the tire, but I don't love the Providence tire. Wait, I just um got to wait and see on that one. I'm not saying it's a bad hire. I just got to wait and see on that one. And I think Iona did a nice job uh, replacing Patino as well. Um, so some basketball stuff. Andre Godala out the next four weeks as uh, he underwent surgery to stabilize fractured left wrist. And will be reevaluated in four weeks. I don't think Andre Godala is that good of a basketball player anymore. I'm sorry. I understand he was on the championship team last year and was a help for the Warriors off the bench and even in their starting five at times, but I just don't see it with him. Um, Carl Anthony Towns may return Wednesday against the Hawks. And Anthony Edwards will be back as well. So that is good news for them. Um, Jalen Brown, non-committal about the Celtics. There was an article in The Ringer that came out. Um, he says, I will stay where I'm needed and treated correct, Jalen Brown says. So that all of a sudden looks like a very uh, distracting story for the Celtics. Now they're not playing well. Josh Hart wants to stay with the Knicks long term as he's expected to decline the player option this summer with the hope of remaining with the Knicks long term. Um, to me, it depends on how he plays the rest of the season. They gave up a lot to get Josh Hart um, on the surface, but he's been everything they've asked him so far. Um. And very sad NBA news from yesterday. Two-time NBA champion, former Knicks center, Willis Reed passes away at the age of 80. Really sad news. Um, thoughts and prayers go out to his family and the Knicks organization. Um, if I'm not mistaken, was he at the Garden a few weeks back when they honored the uh, 73 team for their 50th anniversary? I know Clyde Frazier was the one who spoke to the crowd but I don't remember if Willis was there or not. But it's just very sad news. Um, a lot of football to get into. Um, the Panthers met with C.J. Stroud as a, they ha- uh, also plan to have another private meeting with C.J. before the draft. Russell Wilson had minor knee surgery as he'll be at full health for 2023 after arthroscopic surgery on his right knee. Hmm. Um, DeAndre Hopkins trade talks ramp up as he can be moved soon as interested teams ramp up talks. Um, we'll see who gets him. Um, will, will Dallas get him after getting Brandon Cooks? I don't know. Um, the team, like, I think the Jets should be interested. Um, I don't know if the Giants will go there because I think Arizona's asking for something rich. And who knows? They might get something better back than... Um, the Raiders did for Waller. The Bengals are shopping Jonah Williams as um, the trade interest is heating up after his trade request last week. So that's not surprising. Um, so obviously Shohei Otani um, gives Japan the win. Um, the Japan radio call was awesome. Show Tani says um, it was the best moment of his life. And he commits to the 2026 tournament, which will be three years from now. Um, and then Mike Trout said before the game that it's the biggest game he's ever played in. He said this is different. Well, you can make a case it's true because he's never won a playoff game in his life. I mean, the last time he was in, in the playoffs was what his – third year and they got swept by the Royals and haven't been back since um, Madden's Ring of Honor came out and among those 
in the first ever Ring of Honor for Madden. Um, Barry Sanders, De- Deion Sanders, Randy Moss among those a part of it. Tony Gonzalez, Lawrence Taylor also in there as well. And then the NHL to use Fanatics jerseys as the league announces 10-year uniform contracts starting with the 24-25 season. So that's very interesting as well. All right, best bet of the day brought to you by FanDuel. Um, hmm. This is going to be interesting. Um, there's a lot of games I like. Um, I do like the over in the Avs Penguins game, but the Penguins have been going under a lot lately in their games. But there was one that jumped out to me. And it's over 133 and a half in the CBI championship game between Charlotte and Eastern Kentucky. Um, I think that's just extremely low. I think Eastern Kentucky is going to score. I I think Charlotte's going to score too. So that's a low number. I'm going to lay a half unit on it and make that my best bet of the day. Brought to you by FanDuel. All right, so that's it for the show. I'll be back tomorrow recapping everything. And then the Sweet 16 starts tomorrow, so we're looking forward to that as well. Hope you guys have a great day, everyone.